Hello and welcome to the latest edition of Damien's Midweek Markets, the show where I talk about what's been going on in investment markets and what to look out for in the week ahead. Now, we're going to talk about something different at the start of this week's show, and that's going to be currencies, and in particular the pound. Now, you may have noticed that the pound fell below $1.25 this week, which is a two-year low. So that is an incredible fall from where we were just a few months ago when it was up above $1.30. And of course, that is much lower than where we were two years ago when we were at around about $1.45. So what caused it? Now, there were two main catalysts. The first one was Boris Johnson. So the idea that Boris Johnson is probably going to be our next prime minister spooked traders because of of his talk, a lot of talk around the potential for a no deal Brexit. So a no deal Brexit, which he claims will be pretty painless, the market thinks will be actually very painful. So the currency tumbled. The other reason is Mark Carney, the governor of the Bank of England. Now Mark Carney did a press conference last week and he was talking about the outlook for the British economy. And that outlook again is looking very gloomy because of a potential no deal Brexit. This led him to make some dovish comments. Now when I say dovish that means something that is much more towards cutting interest rates or doing more money printing known as quantitative easing. So he started to suggest that he may have to help the economy out by cutting interest rates. Of course it's not just Mark Carney that makes this decision, it's the whole of the Monetary Policy Committee that does. But the fact that they started to think about cutting rates potentially this year got the market excited and they started to price in the fact that we may get a rate cut in the autumn. Now we had that dovish action in the UK but we also had some more dovish action in Europe. Now the ECB, the European Central Bank, is going to have a new president and Christine Lagarde, who's currently the chair of the International Monetary Fund is one of the candidates and she is much more of a dovish stance. So there was a lot of traders who took the fact that she was a potential candidate as a sign that actually monetary policy in Europe would be even more dovish, more interest rate cuts, perhaps more quantitative easing. So the markets took that as good news, particularly equity markets, but also bond markets. And now if we skip over to what's been going on in equity markets, well, they've been pushing higher. And we remember last week we spoke about the calling in of a trade war truce between China and America. Well, we've not had much on that in the last week. It's gone all very, very quiet. Although Donald Trump is still making noises, suggesting he might start trade wars with some other countries. But the Big news this week was the Federal Reserve. So Jerome Powell, who's the chair of the US Federal Reserve, gave a speech in which, again, he was incredibly dovish. The market had been pricing in at least one rate cut at the end of July, so 25 basis points, they call that. So 25 basis points is equivalent of a 0.25% cut in the interest rate in America. Now, they were also hoping there could be as much as 0.5%. But in the last week or so, the market got a little bit worried that that wouldn't happen because there were some good economic numbers that came out in America. But Jerome Powell gave a very dovish speech and answered some questions from the press, which gave an indication that he will, in fact, be cutting rates at the end of July. The market's priced it in as a certainty. How big that cut is, we've got to wait to see. So that's given some rocket fuel back to equity markets. And we saw the S&P 500 jump above 3,000, only just, then pulled back a bit. So it's getting that momentum building. If you remember last week, I spoke about how those tests of highs, those all-time highs, have been coming at increasing frequency. And when that happens, it often suggests that we might be about to push through that level. Well, we got through the 3,000 level. Now it's all about whether we can close above that level. If we can, then we start looking at 3,050, maybe 3,100, who knows? But on the downside, we're still looking at 2,900 as a kind of support for this market at the moment. If we go down below that, then questions will be raised. It is perhaps unsurprising that the VIX has now tumbled below 13. But if you remember last week, I talked about this divergence in bond markets and equity markets. Bond markets weren't really buying what equity markets were selling. Yields were still falling. Well, the yields have pulled back slightly. So we are seeing the 10-year US Treasury yield pushing back above the 2% level, but it's still very low. In fact, we've even got to the sort of strange scenario where the 10-year government bond from Greece is even yielding less than that of America. It's a very strange world out there, given the crisis we did have in Greece not too long ago. So we are in a very positive 
mode with equity markets at the moment. But the one thing I would say to bear in mind is the earnings season that's just about to start. And as I mentioned last week, there's lots of noises that people are gonna start cutting their earnings expectations. If we see that, just as everybody's rushing back into those very popular stocks that drove the market higher um, last year and into the early part of this year, particularly tech stocks, then if the earnings come in short and disappoint, then we could see some quite strong moves downwards in stock prices. But one thing we still really would like to see is some of the other sectors start to join the rally. So we're talking about the things like consumer discretionaries. Those are the sorts of things that have been lagging and the more defensive stocks have been doing very well. We need to see other sectors coming in and joining the rally to drive it higher. So that is it for this week on Midweek Markets. If you want to get in touch with me, you can via damien at moneytothemasses.com, which is the email. And of course you can get me at money to the masses with the number two on Twitter. So that is it, until next week.